in a way, that's partly the trouble that you wanted to to find out about Chimamanda. That I think I have the unique distinction of having been deported from a country that never really existed in the first place, and certainly doesn't exist now. As part of South Africa's apartheid system, they started dividing up bits of the country and giving independence, and they were countries that were only recognized by Israel and Taiwan, actually. No one else. And then they were closed down pretty smartly when we had a democratic government, but I was um, thrown out of one of those places for, I suppose, what I was teaching in school. They didn't really like it. So that was the trouble part. Mm. Um, so something more that was the trouble part. Let's talk about it publicly air. <laughs> but our lives are connected. I mean, of course, the concern for, for teaching, for schools, and for um, saying something sensible about it, I mean, I suppose, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of my passion for, for those ideas comes from, from that. When we came to see Camilla and the friend she spoke about, um, I don't know if I told you, but we did because we were completely desperate. Um, and we were desperate. <laughs> completely desperate. So often have people come to me this morning. <laughs> that, 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 that happens in every single dinner party. <laughs> we were desperate because uh, nobody really reads policy. I mean, we work in education policy and research, and no one really reads it, especially me. I mean, I have piles of policy especially, especially those who write it. Mm. Well, the people that write it, hopefully they read it, but certainly people who should read it don't really read it. So part of the motivation was perhaps if we can get writers to write about education issues, more people will read it and think about it. And then when they came in, I mean, I agree with Camilla, they really did have um, quite a huge and quite a surprising effect. And for me, the surprise was that these writers who didn't really have any experience in education policy as we had, came back with such deep um, insights. They didn't come back with policy, they came back with insights. And these insights were random, in a sense, because they went to different countries, they met different people, there was no, in a, a scientific or research sense, sampling. So they met random people, they came back with random ideas, but still they uncover um, a lot of really deep things, I think, in education, that educationists rec education recognize as being the key issues that we're facing in, in, um, in, in our work and in our times. And uh, I think the surprise for me was actually, you know, we, we, we say a lot about um, evidence-based policy. And the thing I think we really would like to believe is that policy makers, policy makers and, and politicians make their decisions based on sound evidence and policy. And you know, looking at it and working it all out rationally and then working out what the best solution is. But I think what we saw from these stories, actually, that um, policy making and decision making is far more emotional, far more ideological. And, uh, and that, I think, seems to be the determining thing. I think that's what determines policy, actually. I think the evidence is cherry-picked afterwards to match the ideological positions or the emotional positions that people have. Um, and this, in a way, is why the stories, I think, are so um, pertinent and so powerful, because they speak to people all of us in emotional ways and ways that we recognize. And it creates a space for a new discussion with policymakers and, and decision makers. And I think that's the power of, of um, these stories. They will be there you know, long after people have not read the policy they should have read 10 years ago. I think we'll still be going back to read uh, Chimamanda's uh, essay or, or Camilla's. And that's, I think, the power of these. And the, the ideas that they deal with the issues will be there still and they'll be there. <coughs> we can have a fresh discussion about it.